Hello! I hope that you have already installed Trimble Connect Power BI Connector. If not, please follow the previous video. But after installation, it's the best time to start utilizing the data stored in your Trimble Connect. So let's do this. I will start with uh, connecting to Trimble Connect. So let's type Trimble and here it is. The next step is to pick the right region and choose the model. Okay, I will pick the sample one, this one. So let's start with this. The data has been loaded. You can check the column names uh, on the data side pane on the right side of your Power BI. Let's start with something uh, simple. Let's just drop all of those columns into the table. Let's start with the coit object type, property set, the name, the value, and the unit. Just like that. So now we can see that the structure of this data is not very convenient for analyzing because every record is belonging to one property value, to one property inside of your BIM model. It's not related to one object because if you see those goods, then you will see that all of those currently visible properties, they all belong to one object in your BIM model. So if your models are quite big one and heavy in terms of the data, then you will get thousands or even millions of re records in this table. So let's start with some filtering, some very basic filtering. And the easiest way is to drop a slicer. So here it is. And here let's start with some nested uh, slicing. So at the very beginning, we will slice by the property set. So this is the group of different properties. And then let's use the name. So now, for example, if we are interested in extrusion, then we see that those below properties, they all belong to one uh, property set. So, for, so for, for example, if we want to see the origin X of our beam entities, now they are visible. And one beam object can have only one particular value. So now what we see in the table, we see that every record belongs to exactly one entity in your beam model. Okay, but let's try to find out maybe some materials. Okay, here they are. Some of those objects are undefined. So this information was missing in the beam source, but some they have some data. So for example, those uh, steel elements. So the question is, okay, so now let's get the volume of those steel uh, beams just to get more insight of what we are tackling. So probably it can be found in something like Tecla quantity. And here is the volume. So now we see the volumes. But yeah, how to link, how to link that volume with those materials, which were visible just a few seconds ago? Should I, you know, create two different pages in Power BI and do then something more? So not really. It's not a recommended way. Because when we want to structure differently our data, then it's not the responsibility of the visualization of what we see inside of the Power BI. It's the matter of transformation of our data. So we need to step back into the Power Query. And don't be afraid, it's not so hard. So let's try to transform our data before vi vi visualization part. So now I see my first table, which was just downloaded from the Trimble Connect and what we can try to do. So let's stick with that uh, task that we want to list our uh, elements by material and count their volumes. So we will mix some string values for the materials and some numbers for the volume. So let's start with just filtering uh, our property sets for two different things. So I will use IFC material and I will use the clock quantity. So that's that. Now the scope of the table will be limited, less records, more easy to, to get what is happening. But it was only filtering around the property set column. Now it's time to filter also 
for the property value names. So let's do the same for that. And I will filter the materials and the volume. So now every entity from the BIM model will have at most two different uh, properties. So if I now will just sort just to see what is going on. So for example, that thing, which is somewhere in the BIM model, it has those two different uh, properties uh, the material like this and the volume, uh, <laughs> bad example, but uh, this volume is, is, is too small but probably something uh, bigger will be, so for example, here or here, those are the default uh, units from the Trimble Connect, so probably those are meters, so that's why those values are so small. But okay, uh, that is the case for maybe not the most, but some of our entities that they have both the material and the volume. Of course, it could happen that uh, some things, like, some, like, like for example, those uh, IFC reinforcing bars, they don't have the volume. We don't count reinforcing bars in uh, cubic meters. We are counting them in by the length. So not every entity will have that property. Okay, that was just a disclaimer. So now we have those filtered columns and let's try to create some new columns based on those values. So I will click a conditional column and what I want to do, I want to create the new column with the name material and specify the logic around that. So if the name of, yeah, if the, if the value in the column name uh, will be equal to material, then I want to grab, to copy the value from the column value. So let's do it like that. And that is the first rule. So it will just copy those materials for things which has the material, but whoa, here we get the null values. And that's quite good because it will be the base of the merging process later. So now we have the materials copied into the distinct column. That's quite significant. So now let's do the same, but for the volume. So here is the volume and I will insert a new conditional column like volume. And let's yeah, reuse the same principle. So if the name equals volume, then I want to output the column value. And by doing that, I will get one extra column. Uh, it is somewhere here. Okay. And now you can see that, yeah, I can, I have material or the volume. That's all. So now uh, I think that I can remove things which I don't want to have more. So those property sets, those name and those values and those units, they, I am not interested in them uh, anymore. So now I have extracted what I want. I have specified exactly. Okay. So those should be treated like that, like, like, like that. And that volume can also be changed to a different type. So let's use the decimal numbers. And of course, those null values will not be converted. It's impossible. And now, now it's the most important step that we want to group. We want to merge those records because they belong to the same entity. So, for example, uh, it's quite hard to say it based on the, those GUIs, but probably this and this. No, they are different. Uh, some others. Uh, I should, yeah, just sort them by by some order and then we will see that for example yeah that is a good example that row and that row those two they belong to the same entity to this they have the same GUID so I want to group those records by uh, those GUIDs so let's do that with the help of the power query and there is the function group by here we need to specify okay what should be the source the key for that grouping and I will use the advanced mode and uh, just to get more data after. So I want to group them by the GUID and uh, at the end I want to pick the existing value both for material and both for the volume. So let's start with the material and I will not, I'm not interested in counting the rows so it will be the value 0, 1 or 2 but I want to get the existing value and the minimum value will work for that purpose. So now I'm getting the material and also I will get the volume. So let's go like that. Okay, 
Mm, yeah, I can also group by the object type, but it will be the, the same. So now, after doing it, I have merged the data. So now we don't have the situation like at the very beginning that every re record was related to one property value, but now every record is related not to the property value, but to the entity with the properties which you are interested in. Of course, I still have some null values, so maybe it would be wise to push them, to remove them from our data set. But yeah, for now, let's stick with our transform data. And now let's go back to the visualization part of the Power BI. So let's close apply. And now uh, yeah, it will be recalculated. And after doing that, the shape of our data will be different. And of course, the previous uh, visualization, which, which were based on the previous columns, it will not work. So now let's create maybe some, yeah, some decomposition tree. So I will use the material and also the volume. And now we can see that by summary, we have something and it can be split by the most. We have the concrete and some steel and yeah, let's also use the object type. So now we can also dig a little deeper. So let's see. OK, OK, so this steel volume is split into the beams and columns with that uh, ratio. Of course, it's not very real world sample. You probably need more data to make those charts more interesting to, to other parties. But that's the essence, the essence of transforming the data. And, you know, it's very hard to predict. OK, so there will be some users who would like to list the reinforcing bar lengths. There will be some users which want to list volumes of materials. There will be some people who want to list statuses of some elements. Are they sent? Are, are they produced? What is going on with the project? All of those things are completely different and are up to you because you can do this on your own with the help of the Power Query. One more thing. Uh, in that sample, I was reusing the, the, the initial source. So I started with downloading all of the data and then in the same query, I was transforming the, the table. Maybe a little better solution would be just to use the reference. So you would have just one query to grab the data from the Power BI and then reference it in different subqueries, let's name, like, let's name them like that. And by that, you could have them, for example, yeah, this will be the material volumes, and that will be something like length, rebar, rebar length, etc., etc. You get the point. So there will be one source of the data and later queries which will shape it a little differently. And that sounds logic, but there's one catch in that, unfortunately. Uh, it is related to the how referencing in Power Query works. So, unfortunately, it's not fully working as I uh, shown as I as I as I want to to have it because uh, there is the quite nice article in the Microsoft uh, uh, store and you can read here that every subquery will reevaluate the first one. So let's think that yeah, you would like to get. 10 different tables from the Trimble Connect. And it will mean that your data from Trimble Connect will be downloaded 10 times. And for small models, probably it will not hurt anyone, but you can very quickly imagine that for bigger ones, it will be a headache both for you, but both for the Trimble servers, because you will be downloading the data every time. Probably it should be treated a little differently. Maybe when you are connecting to the model, you should specify which property set and property names you are interested in, and only then data will be given to you. It will decrease the, the overall uh, yeah, the, the, the data uh, size. But for this prototype, that's all what I have prepared. So please remember, you are grabbing all of the properties from your Trimble Connect model, and it's up to you to your data analysis skills inside of the Power BI to shape them according to your needs. And yeah, 
That's all. Thank you.